for those uh, who have an interest in the Solart 15K, I thought I'd shoot a little video of the internals before I start cluttering this up with uh, with the wiring. So I'm just going to kind of give you a walkthrough of the lugs and what I understand about the Solark 15K at this time. Now, I may learn some other things along the way, and if I do, I'll try to share them with you if uh, I can think about it. Let's start right over here on the left. Uh, this is where the batteries come in. And there's two spots for batteries. Two positives and two negatives. And they come through this 200 amp breaker that's on both the positive and the negative. Now, according to the manual, you can operate this with one positive and one negative. But if you do that, you either have to uh, put a jumper from this positive to this one and from this negative to this one. Otherwise, you're going to be limited to 165 amps battery charging and uh, pulling um, battery pulling power out for the inverter. I can't get the right word out. Charging and discharging of the battery would be limited to 165 amps. If you tie these together, then you have the full 275 amp capacity of the system. Solar has some recommended wire sizes to feed this battery input. And according to their chart, zero to 12 feet, two alt copper, and 12 to 20 foot, it'd be four alt, of course it's, it's copper. Now I'm, I am uh, probably about 13 or 14 feet. So I'm gonna run a four alt positive and a four alt negative from my battery banks. And I'll talk about how I'm gonna connect that up later into here. And then I'm gonna run a jumper from the this positive to this positive, and then a jumper from this negative to this negative. And that should give me the full capabilities of my uh, battery charging and discharging. Those look like, uh, let's see, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter lugs, uh, bolts, whatever that comes to, uh, maybe three, I think that's three eighths, or that's going to be the closest um, US uh, unit system. I'm going to come over to here. This is, this is where the MPPT inputs are. This is where the PVs will come in. In this case, it, it will take three MP, it's got three separate MPPT uh, controllers, and each one is capable of taking two strings. So you could actually have six strings inside this unit. I don't remember what the voltage is maximums are uh, i want to say it's around 500 volts but you need to look it up in the manual i'm going to be running around 350 volts on max in here with my wiring the way i have it wired uh, i combined my strings at my solar panels with a combiner box but in this case with the solar you wouldn't necessarily have to have that combiner box out there. Uh, I have six strings in my combiner box. I could run all six strings here. Uh, but I combine those strings into three source circuits. And in my case, I'm gonna bring one uh, PV source circuit one, PV source circuit two, 
And then I will take my third one and bring it over to the second Solart. The next up here is going to be where some of the temperature sensors, the CTs, uh, if you wanted a generator start, two wire start system, it's going to come from this terminal block right here. These are push, push blocks, they're not screws. This is a clamp down, it's not a screw. This switch here is going to be for uh, paralleling units. There's also paralleling cables here. So I'll have to run a Cat5 cable from here over to the second uh, Solar. And then there's a battery communication cable. And I don't remember if it's going to be this one or this one. I'll have to read the manual again. But that will go over to the battery. the EG4 Life Power 4 battery. I'm gonna hook that up, even though I don't think they have the uh, firmware set up in the Life Power 4 to communicate properly with the Solart. So in this case, in that case, I will have to program the battery parameters into the Solart, you know, like the, the cutoff voltage, uh, the shutdown voltage and those kind of things. And that information is gonna be in the Life Power 4, EG4 Life Power 4 manual. And that's how I had to program the grow watts because I could never get the BMS to work properly between the Life Power 4 and the grow watt. Even though Signature Solar said it supported it and it would work, it didn't work. Okay. That's that. Now you've got these inputs down here, and I, I gotta tell you, there is nothing flimsy about this stuff. This is all heavy, heavy duty lugs and connections. These are eight millimeter uh, Allen wrenches. They actually sent an Allen wrench uh, T. I don't know where I put it right at the moment. So, at any rate, you have, let's just start with the grid. The grid input is here. This is a 200 amp rated grid input. And it goes to a uh, bypass relay to where if you need it to bypass the inverter, there's a 200 amp relay inside here that will allow you to pull up to 200 amps through the sol solar arc in bypass mode. There's no uh, separate disconnect you have to use your external disconnect to kill power coming in and out all right the next one over is the um, the load and it comes in from the top and there's a 200 amp breaker in here as well these are ganged together you've got your ground bar connection and your neutral connection now you can do these things you can hook this stuff up different ways uh, you just have to read the manual if you want 120 240 that's how it's currently configured you can also do it strictly 240 you can even uh gang th gang these things together to where you could get three phase out of it there's a lot of different things you can do with these units now the generator input This is where if you were going to run a generator, you could run it in here uh, so that if the, the PV and the batteries went down and your grid went down, then your generator could power the unit. But you can also use this as an output and not just an input. So if you had, uh, let's just say you had a, a load that you want it to be able to power when you had plenty of PV power coming in. 
excess to your needs you could power this circuit and then when it swapped over to the battery or it swapped over to the grid you could turn this one off so it's all controlled inside there so it, it it's not just a generator input breaker it's a programmable input output if you were to do an ac coupling if you want to do that you could do that right here as well I don't intend to use that at this time and with the way I have my system and my line of thinking, I don't want my generator coming in here. Uh, my generator is on the downhill, uh, the load side of the Solarks. That way, if there's a problem with the Solark and I've got to take it out of service, my generator will power my house and then I can take this offline and work on it and i don't have to worry about a generator input that's just my way of thinking others may see it differently uh and it would work fine either way but that's uh that's the internals to this thing i'm going to try to connect my solar assistant to this system and that's going to require the use of a splitter, at least according to the Solar Assistant website. And I don't know which one of these is going to actually tie into the battery. But whichever one it is, I will be installing this splitter. And what that will do, actually it's a duplicator. It duplicates the RS-485 port pin for pin. This is not an Ethernet uh, duplicator. Those will not work. They're different. This is a, a pure pin-for-pin pin duplication. But we'll see. See how that works. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to sh share with you. And I can't think of anything right now. If there's, Let me just do a slow scan through here so you can see it. You might find this useful. Okay, there you go. That's the internals connections for Solark 15K.